March Madness 2015, and now the Midwest region, the final game in the round of 32 from day one. And we saw the number six seeded Butler Bulldogs take on the number three seeded Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And what a game this was. It was a tightly contested battle throughout. And in the first half, it was going back and forth. Notre Dame was in the lead. Butler fought back. And then in the closing moments, less than a minute left to play in the first half. Vistoria hit a three-pointer to put the Fighting Irish up by four. But then with three seconds left, Roosevelt Jones went to the line, went two for two from the free throw line. And it was a two-point game going into intermission with the score 31-29 after one half a play. So then in the second half, it was more back and forth. Butler would take control, though. But then Notre Dame fought back as they would get back in it. And they actually ended up taking the lead. But then Kellen Dunham hit a three-pointer for Butler to tie the game up at 55. And in the closing moments, there was a lot of drama as... Zach August got called for a double dribble with just seconds on the clock. And so the double dribble call. And so they turned the ball over just when it looked like Notre Dame would have a chance to win this game in regulation. All they needed was two points. But the double dribble by Zach August gives the ball to Butler. And so there was a couple of timeouts called at this point. There was a lot of emotion, a lot of drama. But Notre Dame had to calm down. As they end up taking two timeouts, Butler took a timeout as well. And so now Butler had a chance to win this game. They inbounded it, and Kellen Dunham threw up a three-pointer, but it was blocked by Pat Connaughton. Pat Connaughton comes up with a huge play, blocking Kellen Dunham's three-point attempt. There was still .6 seconds left on the clock, though. It was blocked out of bounds, so now Butler would inbounds it. They tried to throw it in and tip it in, but they would not make the basket, and we went to overtime. So this game was going to overtime. Lots of drama and excitement. It's what March Madness is all about. So in overtime, it was back and forth, and then Pat Kanaan hits a tray to make it 62-59 with just over three minutes left in overtime. Kellen Dunham comes back and goes two for two from the free throw line, and then Steve Astoria hits a three-pointer to put the Irish up up by four with the score 65-61. Kellen Martin would then go to the line for the Bulldogs. He made the first free throw and then he put up the second one. He missed. Zach August comes up with a huge clutch defensive rebound and then Jaron Grant gets the layup to put the Irish up by five. Dunham missed a jumper as Zach August got a big block and then Butler ended up getting the ball. They put up another shot. Dunham put it up. Zach August comes up with another defensive rebound. And then he ended up going to the line as he was fouled. He missed the free throw. Cameron Woods would dunk it in, but it was too little, too late as this game came to a close with the final score. Notre Dame 67. Butler 64, and Zach August coming up clutch in overtime, making up for that double dribble. It was an emotional game, huge performances all around. Pat Kanaan coming up big, Vistoria coming up big as well for the Irish. And for Butler, they got some big performances too. They had two players that scored over 20 points, as Roosevelt Jones had 23 points. Five boards, three assists, and two steals in the losing effort, as did Andrew Cherbass, because he had 20 points, three rebounds, one assist, and three steals. But for the Fighting Irish, they're moving on. They're dancing out of the Sweet 16. Steve Vistoria was the leading scorer for the Irish with 20 points, six boards, one assist, and two steals. As he came up clutch from three-point land, he was two for five from beyond the arch. He also went six for six from the foul line. Demetrius Jackson had 13 points to assist a steal and a block. Jerry and Grant had 16 points, 5 boards, 5 assists. And Zach August had 7 points and 13 rebounds, 10 of which came on the defensive end. So he came up big on the defensive glass. He also had a block as well. And Pat Connaughton, 7 points, 9 boards, and an assist and 5 blocks for Pat Connaughton. Coming up big as this was a tightly contested battle. It was coming down the wire, went to overtime. They're very even statistically, but the slight edge was those blocked shots. 
as they came up big in the clutch free throw shooting as they got the shots they needed when it counted the most. Both teams were good from the free throw line as Butler shot 85 Point seven percent from the foul line, 18 for 21. The Irish was 17 for 22, shooting 77.3 percent from the free throw line. But the Irish shot 10 percent, almost 10 percent better from the field, shooting 43.1 percent from the field versus just 33.3 percent for Butler. And as I said, eight blocks for Notre Dame versus five blocks for Butler. And that would be the difference in this game as it went down to the wire and those defensive boards. That was a huge difference, too, as the Irish had 31 defensive boards versus 23 defensive boards for Butler. But Notre Dame, they're moving on in the Midwest, and they will be waiting to see who wins between Wichita State and Kansas. That will be played tomorrow on the 22nd. That's Sunday, day two of the round of 32. But they're moving on to the Sweet 16 where they will be facing one of those two teams, and that game will be being played on Thursday, March 26th. So keep an eye out for that one as we will be bringing you coverage of day two of the round of 32 and coverage of the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight and all the way through the Final Four in the championship game in March Madness. But as for this game, Notre Dame wins with a final score. Notre Dame 67, Butler 64.